This video is a walkthrough of the Paper 3 Calculator Foundation Tier from June 2017. Okay, question one. The table shows the lengths of five rivers. So we've got five rivers and we've got their lengths. Write down the rivers in order of length. Start with the shortest length. So we're just looking for the smallest number in the length column and we're going to write down the river. So the smallest one, 112, is the Don. Then 113, the Mersey. Two hundred and ninety seven is the Trent, and then we've got three hundred and forty six for the Thames, and three hundred and fifty four for the Seven. Amy says the River Thames is more than three times as long as the River Don show that Amy is correct. So three times as long as the River Dom. So three 112s. So type that into the calculator three times 112 and we should get 336. Are they kilometers? Kilometers. So three times as long as the River Don is 336. The Thames is 346, so it is 346 is more than 336, so Amy is correct. Question two. Cups are sold in packs and in boxes. There are 12 cups in each pack. There are 18 cups in each box. Alison buys P, packs of cups, and B, boxes of cups. So write down an expression in terms of P and B for the number of cups Alison buys. So she's got 12 cups in each pack. So that's 12 P. So if she had two packs, she'd have two lots of 12. If she had five packs, she'd have five lots of 12. So 12p is in the packs. And in the boxes, you get 18 in each one. And the number you've got is B. So if you had 10 boxes, you'd have 18 times 10. So the number in the packs is 12p. The number in the boxes is 18b. So the total is... 12p and plus 18b. Question three. Here are four digits. Write down the smallest two digit number that can be made from two of the digits. So for the smallest number, we're gonna we're gonna have tens and we're gonna have ones. So for the smallest number, we want the smallest possible number in the tens. And so that's the one, so that's the one in the tens. And then to make the smallest number out of the options we've got left, we want the smallest one. So that's five, and that will go in the ones. So we've got 15. Write down the three digit number closest to 200 that can be made with these digits. So we're going to have hundreds, tens, and ones. So which digit is going to be closer to go in the hundreds, closest to 200? So we have 100, 500, 600, or 900. The closest to 200 is 100. Now what next? So what's going to be closest to 200? We could put 150, 160 or 190 so 190 is closest so we'll put nine in the tens and then we've got two options left five and six which is closest to 100 i mean 200 
195 or 196. 196 is closest. So that's 196. Question four. Four fifths of a number is 32. Find out what the number is. So four fifths of something is 32. So four fifths is 32. So you've got five parts. So three, four, five parts. And four parts out of five, four parts out of five. So four parts. is worth 32. So if these four parts is worth 32, we can work out what one part is worth by dividing by four. So 32 divided by four, type it into the calculator, and that will tell you each part is worth eight. So each part is worth eight. And how many parts have I got in total? There are five. So the total amount, plus another eight, we've got four parts, which was worth 32, another part, which is worth eight. So 32 plus eight, or five times eight, either one of those equals 40. A path is made, question five, a path is made of white tiles and grey tiles. One quarter of the tiles are white. So if one quarter are white, that means three quarters must be grey. So one quarter is white, the rest, so three quarters, are grey. Write down the ratio of white tiles to grey tiles. So there's one part white and three parts grey. So the ratio is one to three. There is a total of 56 tiles. So we've got a ratio one to three, white to grey, one to three. And in total there's 56. So we've got one part white, three parts grey, And in total, I've got 56 tiles. So I've got four parts in total. So 56 divided by four will tell me what each part is worth. So type it into the calculator and we should get 14. So each part is worth 14. So that means I've got 14 white tiles. I want grey, and that's three lots of 14. Three lots of 14, type it into the calculator, and we should get out 42. Question six. Here is a list of numbers. To work out the median, you find the middle number. So the median of these numbers is 17. Bridget's answer is not correct. What is wrong with Bridget's method? So to find the median, you do find the middle number, but only when the numbers are in order. And the numbers we've been given here are not in order. So 17 is the middle at the moment, but she hasn't ordered them. So she has not ordered the numbers. So she should have found 15 was the medium. We don't have to do that though. Work out the range of the numbers in the list. So the range is the biggest number which is 22, take away the smallest number, which is 12. So 22 take away 12 is 10. 
and part C work out the mean of the numbers in the list. So the mean is where you add them all up and divide by how many. So we're going to add up these numbers. So we'll do 12 plus 13 plus 14 plus 15 plus 17 plus 19 plus 22. It doesn't matter if you do them in that order or the order they're originally in because when you add them up you should get the same result. So we're going to add up all those numbers. And we should get 112. And then we're going to divide by how many there are. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So divide by 7. And we should get an answer of 16. Okay, question seven. Pretty is going to have a meal. She can choose one starter and one main course from the menu. Write down all the possible combinations Pretty can choose. So it's best to do this in a systematic way. So if you start with the first starter, salad, and the first main course, pasta, then still the first starter and now the second main course and the first starter and the third main course so that's all the options with salad as a starter and then we move on to fish so we'll have fish and pasta fish and rice and fish and burger so that's all the options with fish and now finally melon, and it'd be melon pasta, melon rice, and melon burger. And they are all of our options. Question eight. Joanne wants to buy a dishwasher. The dishwasher costs £372. She's going to pay a deposit of 36 and then pay the rest in four equal monthly payments. How much is each monthly payment? So it costs 372 and she's going to pay this deposit of 36 So let's take off the 36 and see how much she's got left to pay. So type it into the calculator. And she's got 336 left to pay. And then she's going to pay the rest in equal, four equal monthly payments. So she's going to split this 336 over four months. So that's dividing by four. And that gives us 84 pounds. Okay, question nine. Davos is a cleaner. The table shows information about the time it will take him to clean each of the four rooms in a house. So we've got the kitchen two hours, sitting room one hour, 40 minutes, bedroom one and a half hours, bathroom 45 minutes, and he wants to clean all the rooms in one day and he will have breaks for a total time of 75 minutes. He's gonna start cleaning at 9 a.m. Will he finish by 4 p.m.? And we've got to show our working. So, how long are all of these jobs going to take him? If we change them to minutes, let's do minutes. So two hours, two 60s, 120 minutes. 1 hour 40 minutes, so 60 minutes and 40 minutes is 100 minutes. 1 and a half hours is 1 hour and 30 minutes, so 60 and 30 is 90. 45 minutes and the break of course, don't forget, 75 minutes. 
So in minutes, we're going to use the calculator just to add these up. So 120 plus 100 plus 90 plus 45 plus 75. So that's 430 minutes. So the total time is 430 minutes. And to change minutes into hours, we're going to do 430 divide 60. So dividing the answer by 60. And that shows us on the calculator that comes out as 7.16 or 43 over 6 um, but there is a button you can press on the calculator so this comes out as 7.1666 recurring if you press the time button which looks like this it will change it into hours and minutes so seven hours and ten minutes so will he finish by four how many hours from nine till four so nine to what, ten eleven twelve three hours till twelve and then another four hours so seven hours so no, he won't. So he will finish at 4.10. So you could either say between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. There are seven hours. So no, or he'll finish at 4.10. Either one of those. But no, he won't. No. Okay, question 10. ABC is a straight line. The length of AB is five times the length of BC. So A to B is five parts. B to C is one part, five times as long. A to C, the whole way is 90 centimeters. So this is just a ratio question, five parts to one part. So it's five parts A to B to one part B to C. And in total, there are 90. It's 90 centimetres the whole way. So 90 divided by six. 90 divided by six. Type it in the calculator. You should get 15. So each bit is 15 centimetres. So five fifteens, five fifteens are seventy five centimeters. Okay, question eleven. T equals four V plus three. Work out the value of T when V equals two. So we're just going to substitute in V equals two. So that will give us four twos plus three. You can type it into the calculator and that should give us 11. Part B, make V the subject of the formula. So that means make it V equals. So to get V by itself, we want to subtract 3 from both sides. So take away 3 from both sides. That will give us on the left T minus 3. And the plus 3 minus 3 will cancel. So that leaves 4V on the right side. And to get V by itself, at the moment it's multiplied times by 4. To get rid of a times by 4, we do the opposite, which is dividing by 4. So you divide both sides by 4, which gives you just V equals T minus 3 over 4. Okay, question 12. 
The diagram shows a cube of side length 2 centimeters. Vera says, the volume of any solid made with six of these cubes is 48 centimeters cubed. Is Vera correct? You must show your working. So we need to know the volume of this cube. So the volume of a cube is, well, the number cubed. So it's um, two times two times two in this case. If you want to think of it as a prism, the area of the front shape times how far back it goes. But either way, the volume of one cube is two times two times two, which is eight centimeters cubed. And if you've got six of them, if you've got a solid made of six of them, six times eight, so six of these cubes, their volume is six times eight, which is 48 centimeters cubed. So Vera is correct. Part B. Draw a cuboid that can be made with six of these cubes. Write down the dimensions of the cuboid on your diagram. So a cuboid is a rectangular prism. So it's a shape of a rectangle at the front um, that goes back the same shape the whole way through. So any shape that's like a 3D rectangle, if that makes any sense. So draw a cube web that can be made with six of these cubes. There's actually two different ways of doing this. So we could have all of the cubes lined up next to each other. So, and it doesn't matter which way round you do it either. So you could have six cubes lined up next to each other in a straight line like so. So that'd be six cubes along, and then it would be back one cube. So for the dimensions, if we did that, it'd be six twos along. So that'd be 12 along, two up and two back. Or you could have the same shape twisted round in any direction. So you could have this same shape turned on any face. And the other shape we could have is if we put two cubes next to each other at the front so we have two cubes next to each other and then it would go back by three and again any way round so we could have, this would be two along at the front so that's four two up and then three cubes back which is six and these are all in centimeters and again you could turn this shape around any way put it on any face and that would be a correct answer so you only need to draw one of those um, either one is absolutely fine and part well the second part work out the surface area of your cuboid. So obviously, whichever cuboid you've drawn, you need to work out the surface area of that one. So I'll do them both. So the surface area is the area of all the surfaces added up. So we'll work out the area of the front shape. So I'll do that in purple. So the front is 2 times 12 for this one, which is 24 centimetres squared. And remember, the back is the same as the front. 
So the back is also 2 times 12, which is 24 centimeters squared. Uh, the top, so I'll do this in green, the top of this shape is, oh, it's 2 times 12 again. 2 along, 12 across, 2 times 12, which is, of course, 24 centimeters squared. And the bottom is the same. 2 times 12, 24 centimeters squared. And the side is 2 times 2, which is 4 centimeters squared. And the other side is also 2 times 2, 4 centimeters squared. So if you've drawn this shape, you're going to want to add up all of these numbers and type them into the calculator, add them up, and you should get a total of 104 centimetres squared. Okay, same thing if you've drawn this cuboid. So the front this time. is 2 times 4, which is 8 centimetres squared, and the back is the same as the front. The top, so it's 6 back, 4 along, so 6 fours, and that's 24 centimetres squared. And of course, the bottom is the same as the top. And the side. So it's 6 by 2. So the side, 6 times 2, which is 12 centimetres squared. And the other side is the same. So another 12 centimetres squared. And... If you had this shape, you need to add up all of these surfaces, and that would be 88. So these ones add up to 88 centimeters squared. So either one of those would be absolutely fine. Question 13. The size of the largest angle in the triangle is four times the size of the smallest angle. The other angle is 27 degrees less than the largest angle. Work out in degrees the size of each angle in the triangle. Okay, so you could just guess and start working out these. Um, that would probably take quite a while easiest way is to use algebra so if we call the smallest angle x so the smallest angle is called x the largest angle is four times that one so four times the smallest one is four x and the other angle is 27 less than the largest angle so 27 less than 4x is 4x minus 27. And we know that all three of the angles must add up to 180, because all the angles in the triangle add up to 180. So x plus 4x plus 4x minus 27 must equal 180. So if we collect these like terms, 1x plus 4x plus 4x, that's 9x's. So 9x's minus 27 equals 180 plus 27 to both sides. 9x equals 207 and divide by 9, so divide both sides by 9, 207 over 9. And that says x is 23. 
So the smallest angle is 23. So we'll write that one in, 23. The largest angle is 4 times 23. So 4 times 23 is 92. So I'll put that there. Largest angle is 92. Doesn't matter about the order. And 92 minus 27 for the other angle, which is 65. And we could check 23 plus 65 plus 92, and it does equal 180. Okay, 14. Andy went on holiday to Canada. His flights cost a total of £1,500. He stayed for 14 nights and his hotel room costs $196 per night. Andy used Wi-Fi for 12 days and Wi-Fi costs $5 a day. And we've got an exchange rate, $1.90 to a pound. And we want to work out the total cost of everything, flights, hotel, and Wi-Fi. And we want to work that out in pounds. So we know his flights. So let's work out his hotel, hotel room. So in dollars, so we could change these into um, pounds before we start, or we could work out how much it is, then change it to pounds after. It doesn't matter. So the hotel room, we'll work it out in dollars. So 14 times 196. Type it in the calculator. That is $2,744 for the hotel room. For Wi-Fi, 12 days at 5 dollars a day so 12 times 5 that's 60 dollars so hotel and wi-fi together and wi-fi that's 2744 plus 60 2744 plus 60 and that equals in dollars 2,804 and we want to change that into pounds so to go from dollars to pounds dollars to pounds we're going to well, we're going to divide by 1.9 so we're going to divide by 1.92804 divide 1.9 and that gives us so in pounds now 1475 pounds going to round it to the two decimal places so that's 79 79 and there's one more thing we need to add on so the flights were 1500 so 1500 plus our answer so plus 1500 on so his total price in pounds is 2975 pounds and 79 pence Part B, if there were fewer dollars to a pound, what effect would this have of the cost in pounds of Andy's holiday? So if there were fewer dollars to each pound, so say it was one dollar to one pound, if it was one dollar to one pound, then it would cost a lot more. So that'd be 2,800 pounds plus 1,500 pounds which would be over 4,000. So it would cost more. It would cost more.
Okay, question 15. So everything, everything is all the odd numbers less than 30. And we've got A and B. A and B. We've got to put it into the Venn diagram. So we've got to put all the num all the odd numbers less than 30 in somewhere. And we've got two circles, A and B. So what goes in both? So what is in A and B? You can see 15 is in both of them. So let's put 15 in the middle. And then what's left in A? We have 3, 9, 21 and 27. What's left in B? 5 and 25. And we need to put all the odd numbers less than 30 in here somewhere. So on the outside, we're going to put whatever's left. So 1, we've got 3, we've got 5, 7, we've got 9, 11, 13, we've got 15, 17, 19, we've got 21, we need 23, we've got 25, we've got 27, and we need 29. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 numbers. A number is chosen at random from everything. What is the probability that it will be in the set A, the union of A and B? So the union of A and B is anything in these circles. So how many numbers are in the circles? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Out of how many in total? Well, 15. We've already counted them. Question 16. Solve these simultaneous equations. So we've already got the same number on the front here. They're both 3x. So we can eliminate the x's by taking these away. So let's go straight into subtracting these. So 3x take away 3x is nothing. 1y minus a negative 4y. So y minus minus 4y. So that's the same as y plus 4y is 5y. And negative 4 take away another 6. Negative 4 down 6 is negative 10. Divide both sides by 5. So y is negative 2. And then we're going to substitute this negative 2 back into the top one. So 3x minus 2 equals negative 4 plus 2 to both sides. 3x equals negative 2. Divide by 3. x equals negative 2 thirds. So x is negative 2 thirds y is negative 2, and you can check your answer by substituting in to the other equation, and you should get it balanced. So x is negative 2 thirds, y is negative 2. Question 17. The table shows some information about the dress sizes of 25 women find the median dress size. So for 25 women, we're looking for the median, so the middle number. So if you had 25 women lined up, you'll have 12 on both sides, and you'll be looking for the 13th one. So there's two eights, then there's nine tens, so we're up to 11 so far. So the median must be 12. So the 13th woman, if they're all lined up, has got a dress size of 12. Three of the 25 women have shoe size 7. Zoe says, if you choose at random one of the 25 women, the probability she has either shoe size 7 or 
dress size 14 is 9 twenty fifths because three twenty fifths and six twenty fifths equals nine twenty fifths. So six women do have dress size fourteen, three women do have shoe size seven. So this would be right as long as none of the women have both. So if one of these women with a shoe size 7 also has a size 14 dress, then they'll be in both of these. So is Zoe correct? Well, no, because someone could have both. Have both size 7 and size 7 shoe and dress size 14. Okay, question 18. Daniel bakes 420 cakes. He bakes vanilla cakes, banana cakes, lemon cakes and chocolate cakes. Two sevenths of the cakes are vanilla cakes 35% of the cakes are banana cakes and the ratio of lemon cakes to chocolate cakes is 4 to 5. Work out how many lemon cakes he bakes. So we're going to work out how many vanilla cakes there are, how many banana cakes there are, take them off and then we'll do the ratio. So 2 sevenths of, so times, 420. 2 sevenths times 420 is 120. So there are 120 vanilla cakes. 35% banana cakes, so 35% times 420. You've got a calculator, you can either do 0 0.35 times 420 or use the percent button 35 percent times 420 that's 147 banana cakes so we've got to take them off the 420 to see how many are left so 420 take away both of these And that should leave us with 153 cakes left. And we have a ratio. So lemon to chocolate is 4 to 5. So 4 parts lemon. Five parts chocolate and that's nine parts in total so 153 cakes the whole thing's 153 so split it between the nine and that's 17 so each part here is 17 cakes And what do we want to know? How many lemon cakes there are? So there are four 17s, which is 68. So 68 lemon cakes. Okay, question 19. In the diagram AB, BC and CD are three sides of a regular polygon P. So we've got a polygon here. Show that polygon P is a hexagon. So we've got two squares and a regular 12-sided polygon 
that join up and they make um, polygon P. So we're going to work out the angles. So we know the angle in a square is 90 degrees. How about the 12 sided polygon? So the exterior angle of a 12 sided polygon is 360 over 12 and that is 30 degrees. So if the exterior angle is 30 degrees, that means the interior angle of the 12 sided polygon is 180 minus 30, so 150 degrees. So if this angle here is 150, we know this angle here is 90, so we can find the interior angle of polygon P. So the interior angle of P all the way around the circle, all the way around the point is 360. So we've got 360, take off the 150 and take off the 90. And that leaves us with 120 degrees. So the interior angle of polygon P is 120. That would mean the exterior angle of P is 180 minus 120, which is 60 degrees. And to find out how many sides it's got, we'll do 360 over 60, 360 over 60, and it's six sides. So it's got six sides. It must be a hexagon. Hexagons have six sides. Question 20. The density of apple juice is 1.05 grams per centimeter cubed. Density of fruit syrup is 1.4 grams per centimeter cubed. And the density of carbonated water is 0 0.99 grams per centimeter cubed. 25 centimeters cubed of apple juice are mixed with 15 centimeters cubed of fruit syrup and 280 centimeters cubed of carbonated water to make a drink with volume 320 centimeters cubed. Work out the density of the drink. So we've got a density question. So density is mass over volume. Density, mass, volume. So we've been given densities. So these are densities. Density, density, density. We've been given volumes. Volume, volume, volume. And we want to know the total density. So to work out total density, density is mass over volume. So if I scroll down, our final calculation is going to be total density is going to be the total mass over the total volume. We already know the total volume is 320. But we don't know the mass. So we're going to have to work out the mass of each of these parts and add them up. So mass is density times volume. So we're going to work out the mass of the apple juice, the mass of the fruit syrup, the mass of the carbonated water and add them all up to go into our calculation. So the mass of apple, apple mass is 1.05 times 25. 1.05 times 25, that's 26.25.
the fruit syrup mass is density 1.4 times volume 15 1.4 times 15 that's 21 and what are these in they're all in um they're on grams and the carbonated water mass is 0 0.99 that's density times 280 for volume and that's 277.2 grams so we can work out total mass by adding these up so total mass 26.25 plus 21 plus 277.2 that's 324.45 so that goes into our final calculation divide it by 320 and we're going to give our answer to two decimal places so that's 1.01 .01. Okay, question 21. Show that these two triangles are mathematically similar. So if they're similar, one is an enlargement of the other one. So that would mean that they've got the same scale factor, the same thing you times by for each of the lengths. So which side goes with which side? So the hypotenuse goes with the hypotenuse and the shortest side goes with the shortest side so 3 and 7.5 and the two other sides are 10 and 4 so we need to work out the scale factor for each of these so 12.5 over 5 what's your times 5 by to get 12.5 that should be 2.5 uh, same with 10 and 4. What do you times 4 by to get 10? So 10 over 4, that's 2.5. And what do you times 3 by to get 7.5? That's 2.5. So they've got the same scale factor for each length, so they are similar. So same scale factor for each side. Okay, question 22. Complete the table of values for y equals 6 over x. So 6 divided by x. So 6 divided 0 0.5. 6 divided 0 0.5 is 12. 6 divided 1.5. So just type these into the calculator. That's 4. 6 divided by 3. That's 2. 6 divided by 5, 1.2, and 6 divided by 6, that's 1. On the grid, draw the graph for these values. So we're going to plot these points on. So 0 0.512, 1, 6. one point five four two three three D four one point five one's there one point five's halfway up five one point two one point two and six one okay we're going to join these up with a smooth curve i'm going to try my best
Okay, question 23. Harley's house has a value of 160,000. Correct the two significant figures. Work out the least possible value of his house. So we're at 160,000 to two significant figures. So the one below to be 150,000 and the one above will be 170,000. So we're going to go halfway for the lower bound. So that's 155000. And the upper bound halfway to the next one up. So that's 165000. The value of Rita's house increased by 5%. Her house then had a value of 210,000. Work out the value of Rita's house before the increase. So we've got a number with 5% added on equals 210,000. So 105% is 210,000. So what it was originally is 100%, but we've added 5% on, so we've now got 105%. So 105% equals 210,000. If we divide by 105, divide both sides by 105, that would give me 1%. So 210,000 over 105, so 1% is 2,000, so now I'm going to times by 100, times both sides by 100, so 100%, so the original amount is 200,000. And of course you can check that by adding 5% onto 200,000 and seeing if you get 210,000, which you should.